guys doing alright this morning? Awesome, so good to see everyone here uh, today. I mentioned this earlier, but maybe some of you snuck in uh, during the service today. We haven't got a chance to meet yet. But I'm just, my name is Kyle. I'm the lead pastor here at Trans Home Life. And we've been praying for you and believing for all of you that you would have a life-changing experience uh, with Jesus uh, today, this morning, uh, in your life. We believe that Jesus changes everything. Anybody believe that this morning? You might as well shout and say something to me today. Don't get quiet on me. Don't get sleepy on me. I know the lights are, are down a little bit, but, uh, but y'all help me preach this morning. Hey, um, anyone ever had to wait on something or someone? Right? Silly question, right? All the husbands in the room, come on, we've been waiting on a woman for a lot. Come on, hey, not too many amens there. Some of you guys, amen, is more right there than you do normally in service. Uh, but yeah, yeah, many of us, like, we, we spend a lot of time waiting on things. Come on, uh, we wait in lines at stores, right, six feet apart, of course, right? Like, I think that's just a good rule to have. You know what I mean? Like, before the pandemic, we should have been six feet apart, because some people don't know about your bubble, do they? It's like some people, like this is, like this is my space, this is my radius here, okay, you're good, six feet apart. Like, I think that should be a normal rule, what do you think, Dean? Okay. I, I think that's a good, good thing. Um, we wait at Tri Cruise, right? And you know if you go to this McDonald's in town, you're going to wait for a minute. I love Zaxby's, in fact, this might be a her you know, some heresy in the room, but I think I like Zaxby's a little more than I do Chick-fil-A. Don't throw stones at me now. Okay, don't, don't go off of uh, off the live feed right now. That, but you're going to wait a minute in that line as actions. Uh, but, but we'll wait. We'll endure, won't we? We'll, we'll wait for those things. Come on, you'll wait at, at Walmart for your Walmart pickup, right? Uh, we wait for all sorts of things. Many of you, you might be waiting right now uh, for a, an order that you place because it's a Christmas present. You're waiting for that to come in, right? Uh, many of you are, are waiting for maybe a Christmas bonus, right? Let's hope it's not like in the, the Griswold Christmas movie and it's not the Jelly of the Month uh, Club gift certificate, right? If you know what I'm talking about. Um, but you're waiting on that, that Christmas, Christmas bonus. Maybe you're waiting to hear about that job opportunity. Maybe you had an interview and you're, you're kind of waiting on that. Maybe you're waiting for all sorts of things. Maybe you're waiting on some relief in this year that we've been in, you're waiting on some sort of relief um, in your life today. I want to help you out this morning. I want to encourage some people uh, today and know that we can have hope and we can have peace, even in the waiting. You might think, brother, I'm not having much peace right now, so I, 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 I want to believe that. Like, I hear you, but we can. We can have hope and peace even while we're waiting, right? Even when we're in a season where it's like we don't see any breakthrough or we don't see any answers or we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, we can have peace and we can have hope even in those things. Why? Because, man, I don't know if you know the God that I know, but I know that my God that I serve, he never fails. Come on, somebody. I know the God that I serve is always on time, even though it might, in my natural seeing of things, it might seem like I'm having to wait a long time, but God is always on time. You're only saying enough this morning. Come on, that's the God that we serve, and we can put our hope and our trust in Him. Why? Because He is with us. He is with us. He is always there with us. Even in the low, the low valley points in our life, in the mountain times, yeah, I mean, it's easy to see God in those moments. It's like, yeah, hallelujah, we can, we can get a praise on. Um, you know, when Jaleesha asked you to jump in the song, that's not a big deal, because it's like, hey, I'm really good at this. But, but, but when things not going our way. It seems to be more difficult. Those are the moments where we need to lean into God even more, and we can have hope and peace even when there's chaos going on, simply because of the God that we serve and we can trust in Him. I can rely on God. Guess what? Why? Because He's redeemed my past. I'm not who I used to be. Guess what? I can rely on God because He's right here with me right now in my present. And you know what? He holds my future as well. So you can put your hope and your trust in God today. He is with us. He is for us. Come on. Uh, you might find yourself right now in a waiting season. You might find yourself waiting for an answer, a breakthrough, some relief in your life. And you might find it difficult to trust God. This Christmas season, as we hear out Christmas is just a few weeks away, uh, I want to share a series with you called Unto Us. Right? 
There, there were many prophecies made about Jesus' coming and his birth. And, and I want us to talk about that in the next several weeks, about those moments when those prophecies were given, about the time of waiting up until when he did arrive, and what that can mean for us today. Today's message is called, Here's Your Sign. The people of God have been waiting hundreds of years for the Messiah to come. In fact, if you have a Bible or, or an app of the Bible on you, you can turn to Isaiah chapter 7. In fact, the prophet Isaiah, he lived some 700 years before Christ ever came. So hundreds of years, people had been, had been told there were prophecies given. They've been waiting for this coming Messiah. Years went by. Months went by. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 100 years, like all these years of life, they're in this waiting season. We don't like to wait, do we? No, we don't. We don't like to wait. Like we want our food fast. We want our Amazon next day, right? You pay for that. We don't like to be stuck in traffic. We want God to move right here, right now. We want that answer today. We want that relief in our life. Now. But in that waiting, in that waiting, God simply wants us to trust in Him. But far too often, we end up looking past Him to that answer, to that blessing. Where we're so focused on, I need this relief. I'm so focused on, God, I need the way out. Or, I, you know, where we're so focused on the blessing or, or the thing that come out, the miracle. We're so focused on that that sometimes we miss the Messiah okay. in the looking, in the waiting. We miss him. And I don't want to miss him. I don't want to miss Jesus. I don't want to miss what God wants to do with me, in me, and through me in that waiting period. Because maybe the, that thing that we're wanting to get through, that thing that we're wanting to get over, maybe that very thing that God is wanting to use for a specific plan and a specific purpose. Maybe that thing that is like that thorn in our flesh, right? Maybe that thing is meant to strengthen you to come out different on the other side. God's ways are higher and better. His purposes are better for you and I than we could ever think, dream, or imagine. In the waiting, God simply wants us to trust in Him. Do you need to trust Him more today? Do you need to lean on Him more today? Isaiah chapter 7, we're going to start in verse 1. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, King Rezin of Aram and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, but they could not overpower it. Now the house of David was told, Aram has allied itself with Ephraim, so the hearts of Ahaz and his people were shaken, as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out, you and your son, Shear and Jessup, to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road the launderer's field. Say to him, be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Some of you need to underline that in your Bible today. Some of you need to get that in your heart. I believe God would say those same words to you today. To not be afraid. To stay calm. To be careful. Don't lose heart. Because of these two smoldering stubs. The things in your life, they may seem like a great fire, but they're really just smoke. Because of these two smoldering stubs of fire, or because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aaron and the son of Ramaliah, Aaron, Ephraim, and Ramaliah's son have plotted your ruins, saying, Let us invade you to let us tear it apart and divide it among ourselves and make the son of Tabeel king over it. Yet this is what the sovereign Lord says It will not take place, it will not happen, for the head of Aaron is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is only Rezin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Ramah, his son. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Here now in your house of David, it is not enough to try the patience of humans. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. 
He will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. For before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid to waste. The Lord will bring on you and your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any since Ephraim broke away from Judah. He will bring the king of Assyria. Let's pray. Father, we love you. God, we thank you for your goodness today. I thank you that you are with us. There may be times in life when we don't see that, but God, you are with us. You are Emmanuel. You are God with us. And because of that, we can trust you. We can trust you to give us strength in the storm. We can trust you uh, to be on time, even in the trial time. We can trust you today because you love us and you are with us. Father, help someone to be encouraged today. Help someone to lean on you more today. Help someone to trust you, even if for the first time. To put their trust and their hope in you today and only you. Speak to us today, Father. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. All right, so, so, so that seems like maybe a lot. There's a lot of names. And, and, and I love that the Bible is not just something made up. There's actual geographical locations. And there's history that is involved. And, uh, and it's important that we know a lot of this stuff um, to help make it make sense. And if the Bible can make sense to you, you can understand it more. And if you can understand it more, guess what? You can apply it more. And that's the whole purpose of all of this, right? So, while there's a lot going on in this verse, I want to help kind of unpack that and then kind of give us some applications for us and what that means for us today. So, as we open this passage, as we read through it here in Isaiah, the kingdom of Judah is in crisis. Israel has partnered itself with some other kingdoms, and they're coming in to try to take over Judah. There's this invasion plan. The Bible tells us that they're, they're shaken, right? They're, they're afraid, and they're shaken, and the king of Hazem Judah is, is, is nervous about this coming um, invasion. If you know anything about Israel's history, after uh, King Solomon's death, the territory had become so large that they split it into two different territories, the north and the south, Israel and Judah, right? And if we know how human people are, we've seen it throughout our very own history, right? Uh, years ago in the Civil War, there was the north and the south. In other parts of the world, there's, uh, you know, the, the area is divided and people think that they're better than other people. And then you end up with conflict and, and war and, and issues, right? And, and the same thing has happened now. With these people, and they're, they're in a season of, of rebellion. Both kingdoms never kept up with their honor to God. And, and we see throughout Israel's history, there's this back and forth where, where, where there'd be a remnant of people uh, that would choose to follow God. And then, and then, the, then there were people that, that wouldn't. There would be kings that were over the land that weren't godly kings, such as Ahaz that we're talking about today. He was not a godly king. And, and so we have all this back and forth throughout the history of God's people. For us, it's the same way. Nothing's changed. But there's many today that, uh, you know, they're back and forth in their relationship with God. Many of us, we can say that we've probably been that way in our own walk with Christ. Here, serving the Lord. Not so much here. And, and back and forth and back. It's just a, it's the human condition. But both kings, kingdoms struggle uh, to stay faithful to God. And eventually, they're both exiled. Eventually, both conquered. Isaiah, Isaiah 7 shows us today that the kingdom of Israel and Aaron, they're trying to invade Jerusalem, which is the capital of Judah. And here we find King Ahaz and the people nervous in Judah. So what happens? God intervenes. God sends the man of God. God sends Isaiah, the prophet, to come and encourage them. And Isaiah comes up, even though King Ahaz was not a God-honoring king, Isaiah still, or uh, God, through Isaiah, still wants to give him a chance to turn to him and to trust in him. So God is speaking not only to the king, but also to the people as a whole to say, hey, listen, don't be afraid. I'm coming through for you. I'm going to make a way. Turn your hearts to me. Trust in me, right? That, that, that's God's plan for all of us here today, is that we would turn to him, that we would trust in him, that we would not be afraid, that we wouldn't turn to the left or the right or to this thing or that thing or this person or that person, but we would simply trust in God with our life. And here we see him give Isaiah uh, this word and this opportunity for King Ahaz to turn his heart to him. He tells him to be careful, keep calm, don't be afraid. He says, God just speaks to him. Isaiah says, it's not going to happen. These people are not going to invade you. They're not going to overtake you. So 
The task force sign that has, says, no, I'm not going to put you to the test. Now, he sounds real holy right here, but he really isn't, right? If you go to 2 Kings, we see uh, uh, kind of a, a look into King Ahaz and his life and, and who he really was. And he was not a man uh, after God. He, he did not serve the Lord. And so he sounds really holy right here, but he's really not. In 2 Kings chapter 16, it says he does not do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. He followed the way of the kings of Israel, and he even sacrificed his son in the fire. Yet, God still was trying to get his attention, still trying to turn his heart to him. He sent a message through the prophet Isaiah. Now, even though God presents this and says, hey, listen, I'm, I'm coming through, I'm going to make a way, King Ahaz doesn't turn his heart to the Lord. In fact, King Ahaz turns to another empire, another people. He turns his heart to the Assyrians and says, hey, can you help me? I've got this invasion. And so, so he, he invites the help of another empire, the Assyrians, to come in and help him fight off this invasion. This act of him not choosing to trust God and trusting in this other empire works in the immediate, but in the long run, it actually bites him in the butt, so to speak. Sorry, I don't have a real profound way to describe that, but that's what it is. Because the Assyrians return on them later on. And sometimes don't we do that in our lives? God's asking you to trust in him, and, and we want to believe, and we try to believe, yet we end up turning to our own empires. We turn to our own thoughts, our own opinions, our own fleshly desires. We end up turning to people and we turn to things. We, we end up trusting in the empire of our employer and our paychecks. We end up turning to the empire of our own strengths and our own wisdom. We turn to relationships and, and other people. We'll, we'll look at self-help books, but we won't look at God's book for us. And so many times in our life, we trust in other empires instead of trusting in the Lord. Instead of trusting in His promises. Instead of trusting in the fact that He's made a way time and time again for us. We do that all the time. If, if we can see this, we, we can be King of Hands at times, can't we? And we end up putting our trust all to have instant gratification. Ought to fix a momentary situation, to have a momentary pleasure, to in the long run, it not really fulfill it, it not really satisfies. In the moment it felt good, in the moment it satisfies, but never really lasted or fulfilled it. We do that all the time. You ever have someone offer to give you help, and in our pride we say, no, 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 I got this. Right? I don't know how some of you are. Some of you guys, when the groceries come home, I, I, it's a goal of mine to get them all in one shot. The back, I, any guys with me? I'm, I'm going to get all of them in one shot. Like, I'll trip over the stuff in the garage. Uh, and then, you know, there's only a small space between the Haley's car and, 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 and the wall. And, and I got all these bags, and I'm trying to get them in. And, and I'll trip over stuff just so I can say, man, I got them all in one shot. Now, I, I don't think I've ever done that. Two, two trips is okay, but I want to get them all in one shot. Anybody ever, you know, offer to help you? You're like, you know, no, I, I'll take care. I got this. Right? And then you struggle through whatever that is, and, and you get through it, and you fight through it, and you cry through it, and you bleed through it. Anybody here today is quiet, so I'm thinking, yeah, maybe. maybe we'll, do that. We'll, we'll struggle through things because of our pride, and people are offering to help us. What if, and, and we do the same thing to God, don't we? We do the same thing with Him. God has, has got a plan and purpose for your life. God has got a particular way that He wants you to live. He's given us His Word. He will lead us through His Holy Spirit. Yet so many times, we'll choose our own way, our own thinking, our own strength, and our own ability. God, you know what? Appreciate it, bro. But I got this. And, and sometimes we don't even say that. The way that we're living our life would suggest that. God, I've got this. I don't need your help. We'll struggle. We'll struggle. And that's what Israel did throughout their whole history. They, they would do that time and time 
Again, this lack of trust shows our continual need to grow in our relationship with God. And why do we do? Why, why, why do we accumulate the stuff that we accumulate? Why do we? Why do we? Uh, you know, have the relationships that we have and, and, and invest in some of the things that we invest in instead of trusting in God, right? We, we, we do all this stuff. Stuff is just stuff. People come and go like more stuff is not going to make us happier. More things, more money, a better job is not going to fulfill us, the right person in our life. None of those things are going to bring us true happiness. None of those things are going to truly fulfill us. In the moment, it might be good. In the moment, it might feel good. In the moment, it might seem right. But in the long run, in, in the depths of our heart and our soul, it does not truly fulfill us or satisfy us. So we have got to stop putting our hope in all these things in this world, all the things that we try to accumulate and evolve in our life. But we simply need to learn to put our trust and hope in God, who, guess what, does not change. Money comes and goes. Stuff fades away. Gets old. We gotta buy new stuff. People come and go in your life. But God never changes. In fact, He is with you always. So why don't we trust Him more? Why don't we trust Him more? He will always be there with us. He is with us here and now. So what does all this have to do with Jesus? With Christmas, right? I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you're thinking that. I hope I have a good answer uh, for you this morning. Isaiah turns his attention away from the hands, and he turns it to the people. He says, what? House of David. Right? Remember that? Have you read it? He says, House of David. God's people were in a dark time here, a period of rebellion and judgment. Now there's this, uh, you know, talk of this invasion coming in. And Isaiah uses the situation of anxiety and fear and helplessness to describe what God will do. And what does he say? He says here in verse 14, many of us, we've heard this, but maybe not in this context. We've heard it as Matthew has shared in his gospel. We've heard it as we talk about the Christmas story every year. But what about here as it was spoken in Isaiah's time? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. What we have here, most theologians uh, concur that this is a dual prophetic fulfillment. And what that means is that there is a immediate uh, answer and fix in that moment, and then there's a future prophetic uh, coming that's going to happen. So right here in this moment, as he says the word virgin, it doesn't mean what we know is virgin, right? But it could simply mean a young woman. So what likely is about to happen is that there's a young woman in the royal house, that is going to give birth. And if you remember, the Bible says, by the time the child will, will eat certain things and will know right from wrong. And so, so what it's suggesting is not necessarily the child is the answer, but it's a time frame. By the time this child is a certain age, these people are going to be defeated. This invasion is going to be done in all of it. So in the moment, it's suggesting this will be a sign to the end of this thing, and it will be a certain time period. But then later on, the future implications would be that Jesus would be born of a virgin, the Messiah uh, will come. Right? So it's this really cool thing, and maybe, maybe we don't see that uh, offhand first hand, but this really cool thing happens. Because God doesn't just give an immediate fix. He provides an eternal answer. God's not interested in just band-aiding an ongoing problem in our life, or even for Israel, an issue of sin. And constant rebellion. He wanted to make them whole. His plan for your life is to make you whole. He doesn't want to just band-aid your issues that you have in your life. He wants to make you whole. He doesn't want to just fix your immediate situation. He wants to provide a permanent answer for you in your life. Right? But what do we do so often in, in our lives is, is, is we try to fix the outside stuff going on in our life before we correct the inside. So we try to correct our behaviors without correcting our nature. Our nature being a sin nature. Our issues being sin issues. So many times as we come to Christ, we want to fix all those outside problems. Well, you know, I'm going to church now, so I should probably stop doing some things, saying some things, and acting a certain type of way. And we'll try to focus on all those things instead of getting God's word in us. Instead of getting God's spirit in us. 
Instead of starting to follow his ways and his word and stop trying to fix all those external things, we need to fix the inside first. And as we do that, the outside will come along. See, God, God has never been interested in just band-aiding our issues. And he, he wants to make us whole. He doesn't want to just band-aid the issue while you've got some internal bleeding going on. He wants to make us whole. We think we can repeat a prayer and that everything's good. We're fixed. We're, we're good to go. There's so much more to that. And we can do that because of Jesus, because he is God with us. The sign is Jesus. You want a sign? Many of us are looking for a sign. We're looking for a way. We're looking for a breakthrough. We're looking for the light at the end of the tunnel. We're looking for blessing. We're looking for favor. We're looking for this opportunity. We don't need to look for anything other than Jesus. He is the sign. It's not what's on the other side. It's Jesus. He is the sign for you and us today. So don't be so caught up in looking for that answer and looking for that breakthrough and those blessings and those things because oftentimes we run after those things instead of just running after Jesus and we miss him all together. Stop running after those things and just fall in love with Jesus today. When Jesus did come, how many people still missed him? And they knew it was a part of their history. When Jesus was born, they knew. People knew it was a part of their history. They grew up knowing that stuff. They knew the sign, but yet they still missed him. Why? Because they had their own thinking about the way the Messiah was going to come. They had their own way of picturing what he was going to be. When he, they, they pictured this great ruler, this military type ruler that was going to come and overthrow everything and, and, and take over. And, and Jesus wasn't that. And it messed them up. They missed him. Because they were looking at it all wrong. I don't want to do that today in my life. I hope you don't either. I don't want to miss Jesus because I'm, I'm looking to everything else to fulfill me and satisfy me. When it's him. It's Jesus. The Bible says this, what signs and wonders will do what they will follow those who believe. Not the other way around. We're not meant to follow those things. It will follow us as we believe in him, as we follow, the more we trust in him, the more we give our lives to him, the more we obey him, the more we will see blessings, signs, wonders, breakthroughs in our life. Jesus is the sign. Here it is your sign this morning. When Matthew when he writes his gospel and he tells the account of Jesus' birth, you remember when, when he talked about Joseph, right? And Joseph was kind of like, I don't know what to do here. Like, I don't want to bring disgrace on the family. Here's Mary. She's a virgin. Uh, we're not married. We're planning on getting married, but we're not married. And this might look a certain type of way. And you remember Joseph was planning on divorcing her? But what happened? An angel of the Lord came and, and gave this same word. He repeated these words that Isaiah said some 700 years before, Right? She will give birth to a son. You're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place right here to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him what? Emmanuel. Not that his name would be Emmanuel, but his nature would be Emmanuel. God with us. See, Jesus was fully man and fully God. You remember how John put it in his gospel? That in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God. He would later on go to say that the Word became flesh. And dwell among us. Jesus became fully man while being fully God to bridge the gap between us and God because of sin and had broken that relationship. So Jesus had to come the way that he did to bridge that gap. So he will be Emmanuel. He will be God with us. So you have a very personal God. In all other religions, Christianity is one that stands out. Because we have a God that came to us. Many other religions, it's everybody trying to earn their salvation. Trying to earn their way to heaven. Or earn their way to this thing or that thing. Christianity stands out because God came to us. Jesus is Emmanuel. God with us. The sign is Jesus. The sign was to show who God is. Right? Jesus is the physical representation, the physical revelation of God himself. For us. And Isaiah, he showed that sign. He said, House of David, this is the promise. House of David, this is the God that you serve. House of David, this is the way maker, the miracle worker. Come on. This is the God. And I would say the same thing for you today. This 
praising the God that we serve, that he is an on-time God, that he's a way-making God, that he's a miracle-working God, and he did that through Jesus for you and I. Because of that, we can trust in him. Because of that, he is good. His promises are yes and amen. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He is with us through his influences of his Holy Spirit. He is with us when we take communion together. He is with us when we uh, get water baptized. He is with you every time that you say a prayer. He is with you every time that you open his word and, and begin to read it and study it and get it in your heart. He's with you in every action of every day of your life. Whether you see it or realize that or not, he is with you. He is with you um, to comfort you. He is with you to enlighten you and protect you and to defend, defend you in every temptation and trial that you go through. He is God with us. The Son does that to us. Jesus. Come on. Don't be like King Ahaz and try to do things on your own, in your own power, in your own logic, in your own thinking. Don't be, just trust in God. Even in the waiting, I know it's difficult. I've been there. Still am there sometimes. I, I know it's difficult in the way that we don't see uh, the, the purpose in any of the pain. We don't see the breakthrough. We don't, we don't see anything changing. Don't feel like God is being absent in his silence. He is with us. In the highs and the lows. Come on, my God is good. Anybody believe that this morning? Oh, come on, my God is good. His promises are still true. He proved that through Jesus. Come on, his word never fails. He never leaves me. Guess what? He never forsakes me. When I'm lost, he's my God. When I'm weak, he makes me strong. When I'm hurting, man, he is my comforter. Well, this is the God that we serve. And nothing can separate us from his love. Come on, that, that right there, that gives me hope. That gives me peace. Even when I'm going through stuff, even when I'm going through issues, even when I can't see it, that gives me hope. That gives me peace. I don't know what it does for you today. Jesus said in John chapter 14, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. He doesn't say, I'm giving you a peace. I'm not giving you a concept of peace. I'm not giving you an idea of peace. I'm not just giving you a picture of peace. I'm giving you peace because I am peace and I'm giving you myself. You can trust in God today. You can have hope. You can have peace. Even in the craziest moments of your life. You may be looking for an answer or a way out or breakthrough or whatever it is today. Just look to Jesus. Just put your trust and your hope in him. Hope and, and peace, they're not found in the absence of problems. Problems are going to come. That's life. And hope and peace are not found in the absence of those things. Hope and peace are found in the presence of God. That's where our hope and our peace lies. And that has made a way, that has made possible through Jesus today. Worship team, you guys can come on up. It's easy to trust God when everything is going good for us. It's easy to trust God when the bills are paid. It's easy to trust God when everyone's happy with you. It's easy to trust God when your grades are really good. And mom and dad's not arguing and fighting with you. Easy to trust God when there's not issues and struggles in our life. But life's not perfect. Life gets messy at times. We go through things. There are troubles. There are trials. A, a relationship with Christ, following God, trusting in Him doesn't mean we won't ever go through stuff in our life. But it means that He will be there with us every step of the way because He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Jesus is your sign of God's promise. Jesus is your sign of God's hope. Jesus is your sign of God's love for you today. Those of you with kids, you remember when your kids were born? Oh, mama, do you remember looking down at your baby, just standing in awe and amazed, that beautiful little child, before they could talk and get on your nerves, right? You look down at those children. 
You looked at them. You looked at their cute little cheeks. You just want to pinch them. You made sure to count all their fingers and toes, right? Make sure they're all there. You looked at their eyes. You looked at this precious child. You looked at them while they're sleeping. And you just saw that they're so peaceful when, they, when, when they're sleeping. They're, they're so peaceful, right? Even as they get older. Like, yes, so peaceful. You're such an angel when you're sleeping. But you looked at that child and you thought, what a precious miracle that you have. What a bundle of, of joy that you have. And you begin to maybe dream and wonder about that child, right? I wonder what their personality is going to be like. And you begin to look at all their features. And like, do they have their daddy's smile? Mama's eyes? So-and-so's ears? God bless my son. You got my ears. And they stick out. You begin to look at all these things. You begin to wonder, right? You know, what are they going to be like? What's their temperament going to be? Are they going to drive me crazy? Are they going to, you know, what are they going to be? How are they going to aspire to be, like when I grow up, what are they going to say in that blank there? I look at them and say, man, my, my child's going to do great things. My, my kid can be president. Who knows? Like, you begin to dream, you begin to wonder. You know, we sang that song earlier when he's Ryan, his family, and Aaron, his substitute family member there for a moment. They sang that song, Mary, did you know? And I wonder if Mary looked at Jesus the way that many of us have looked at our kids. And I wonder as she looked at this child, knowing what had been spoken to her, knowing what the prophecies, I wonder if she really knew. In that moment, as she's counting Jesus' toes and fingers, as she's looking at all his features, I wonder if she began to do, I wonder if she thought about, I wonder if she really knew what this meant, what it was going to be like to see Jesus grow up. I wonder if she could see the lives that he was going to change. I wonder if she could see the lame walk again in this child. I wonder if she could see the deaf speak again in Jesus as he was born sitting in that nature. I wonder if she could picture the lepers being healed. I wonder if she could see him turn the water into wine. I wonder if she could see hundreds and thousands of souls, millions of souls to come hundreds of years later in 2020. By the time this came, I wonder if she could picture this amount of people that would give their life to him and choose to trust him. I wonder if she could picture this child on the cross in the agony that he went through pain that he suffered, the blood that he shed. I wonder if she could picture in that moment, I wonder if she could picture him giving up his last breath to die for the sins of the world. And I wonder if she could picture that glorious moment when he would rise again, when they would go to the tomb and the stone would roll away and the tomb would be empty. I wonder if she really knew what was happening in that moment. I wonder if the people really understood and knew. Yes, they had been told about a sign. Yes, they had been given this sign, but did they know the significance? Did they really know what this meant for them? I think if they did, I think a lot more people would have chosen them in those days. I think today if people really knew, they would choose to put their trust and hope in Him. And that's our job, church. That's what we're, we're supposed to bring the hope of the world. Jesus is not just a sign to you, He's a sign in you to the rest of the world that He is the Son of the living God, that He is the Messiah, that He is the Savior of the world. And maybe this Christmas Maybe this Christmas we could present that sign to our family as we gather, to our friends, to our co-workers, to a very hurting world right now. To you, to Jesus in you, can that be a sign to the world today? Come on, we can stand up with me all across this room.
Don't just know the sign. Know the significance. Know what it would mean. Jesus was a sign of God's promise. Jesus is a sign of God's promise and faithfulness and hope and love to you today. Jesus was a sign of God's plan of redemption and salvation for us. He was more than just a baby. This baby would break the curse of sin in humanity. He would bring hope. He would bring peace. He's still doing that right here, right now for you and I today. Isaiah's prophecy of hope was given in a time of hopelessness and rebellion. I think we can look around the world today and we can see a lot of the same things playing out. There's a lot of hopelessness. There's rebellion. We live in a post-Christian world today. Less and less people are going to church and believing. In that moment, God gave a sign. And through Jesus, He would give us an opportunity to fix the sin issue that we have. He would be a man who would be God with us. He would physically walk with his creation. He would sacrifice himself to those who are lost and dead and sin. Here's your sign today. The Savior is here. Jesus is here. And we can put our hope and our trust in him today. Let's quit hoping and putting our trust in everything else. Let's look to Jesus. Take one of you by your head and close your eyes.